Let's be honest, chicken teriyaki is just good. It nails it on so many different levels. I've been eating it my whole life and it still holds up today, but I'm here to tell you that you can make a chicken teriyaki at home better than any version you've ever had at a restaurant, and that is a guarantee, but it's gonna take some new techniques. It's gonna take some skills, and that's what this video is all about. We're diving deep into the world of teriyaki, so you can master this dish and add it to your arsenal of meals that you can whip up for dinner throughout the week. Now I grew up on teriyaki sauce. I basically drank this stuff out of the bottle. It was so damn good, but it wasn't until recently that I actually learned how to make a traditional teriyaki. And it's quite simple. There's three base ingredients to every teriyaki sauce. You've got a sake, which is a rice wine. You have a mirin, which is also a rice wine with a lower alcohol content that's also sweetened. And finally, soy sauce. These three ingredients, you mix together in equal parts, you cook them down, boom, you have a teriyaki sauce. That's the simple version, but you can also also add extra flavor. For me, I like extra flavor in my sauce. So I'm gonna be adding some aromatics. I've got two cloves of garlic that I'll slice up and a knob of ginger that I'll peel and cut into slices. And once you have all of that sliced up, then you can finely mince your ginger and garlic together. And the goal is to get this super fine because I'm not pureeing this sauce. These little pieces will be in the final sauce. So what we're gonna do first for this chicken teriyaki is get a pan on, a little sauce pot. I'll put it on a medium low heat, and then I'm gonna dump in a little bit of oil. And this step is optional, but if you really wanna flavor blast your sauce, it's definitely worth it. So I've got my ginger and my garlic in there. And what I'm doing is blooming these aromatics, basically waking them up and also infusing them in that oil because oil is the best carrier of aromatic flavor. So just keep an eye on this, make sure you're stirring it because you don't want that garlic to burn. This is a gentle cooking process. So this has been cooking for about three minutes, smelling extremely fragrant. I'm gonna go in with the liquid ingredients in equal parts. It doesn't really matter what you're measuring in. I'm just using a one cup measuring cup. It's a dry measuring cup, but it doesn't really matter. As long as this is equal parts, you're good to go. One cup of the mirin, that's your sweetness. Oh, just fit that in there and then one cup of the soy. And now I'll turn the heat up just a bit and let that alcohol cook off and also let those flavors really intensify. That's the bubble you're looking for, just a gentle simmer. I'm just gonna give this a quick taste to see where we're at. getting there for sure. Need to cook up that alcohol just a little bit more. And a lot of recipes will tell you to add extra sugar, which will help thicken the sauce and also sweeten it. Teriyaki sauce is a very sweet sauce, but I would taste it first because mirin already has a lot of sugar in there. And for me, that is plenty sweet. So what I'm gonna do to thicken this since I don't have that extra sugar is use a cornstarch slurry, which is just a two to one ratio of cornstarch. I'm using two tablespoons of cornstarch to four tablespoons of water. And once my sauce has reduced by about a third, I'm gonna slowly drizzle in that slurry to really thicken up this sauce. If you look how luscious that sauce is. And so simple. There is one more ingredient, totally optional, but the teriyaki sauce that I loved growing up, there was this one brand, it had so many sesame seeds in there, which was just great for texture. It's a nice little crunch and also flavor, of course. And also look at that, it just looks really fun. The next reason you should be mastering chicken teriyaki is that it's such a well-balanced dish. And when it comes to really building up our arsenal of meals that we can go to throughout the week, we want those dishes that are nice and balanced. And once you have that teriyaki sauce, all we have to do is cook a protein, cook a veggie, serve it over rice, boom, you've got a beautiful dinner. And because it's chicken teriyaki, well, we need a cut of chicken. I'm going with chicken thigh, which is by far my favorite cut for this. My chicken thighs are bone in and skin on, and I would definitely recommend buying chicken thighs with the skin on, and you'll see why in a second. But if you can only find the boneless, skinless chicken thigh, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna keep the skin on, but I'm gonna remove the bone, which I won't need when I'm pan frying these chicken thighs. And I'm also 
just gonna clean up any extra skin. If there's any extra fat, you can remove that. And my favorite technique for these chicken thighs is I'll salt and pepper them on both sides and I'll pop those in the fridge overnight. And you'll see when the chicken thigh comes out the next day, that skin will have transformed. It will look a little more leathery, a little more dried out, and that's what we want. That's how we're gonna get maximum crispiness on that skin. And of course, if you don't have time, you can just skip this step and salt your chicken 30 minutes beforehand and you'll still be good to go. So I'm gonna put the chicken thigh skin down in a completely cold pan and turn the heat on to a medium heat and slowly let that pan come up to temperature and start rendering out the fat in the chicken skin. And while that's happening, I'm gonna cut up my veggies. I've got some broccolini here, a family member of broccoli, but you can use whatever veggie you want. We're gonna be frying these veggies in the fat that is rendered off the chicken skin. So you can see I'm just on a medium heat and the fat after about four or five minutes is really starting to render out. Starting to get crispy, definitely not there yet, but there's still plenty of more fat to render out of that skin over the next few minutes. It's bit splattery over here, but look how much fat is coming off just that skin. And you can see it's starting to really get crispy. Still not there yet. I want a nice even brown on that. I went to get a new camera angle and the heat was just a little too high, so you can see this is slightly darker than I want. I prefer something just nice and golden like this. So you get the idea. By letting that skin dry out, we pretty much have a glass coating on the chicken dry. When the chicken thigh is crispy on both sides and it's cooked through, you can remove that from the pan and now we have all this beautiful fat and that's when we'll toss in our veggies and just let those brown on one side and get nice and crispy. And then you can turn them over, add a little bit of salt and just cook those to your desired doneness. Now another reason to master teriyaki is once you've really nailed down this sauce, we're talking versatility in a bottle right here. It doesn't have to be chicken. It doesn't have to be broccoli. You can use any protein, any veggie. I've tried this dish with so many different options, whether it be a vegetarian option or a piece of salmon, and it's all good. It's just a very versatile sauce. And one vegetarian option that I really love if I feel like my meat intake is a little too heavy is tofu. And I'll use the same exact process that I did on the chicken. I'll make sure my tofu is is nice and dry, salt and pepper it on both sides, and I'll throw that in the fridge overnight. And again, if you don't have time, it can go right into a pan of oil. And the key here is to get it really nice and crispy. Make sure you're using enough fat or enough oil to get a nice crust on your tofu. So I fried my tofu for about four to five minutes on each side, and my veggie of choice was the only thing I had in the studio. I had an onion in the pantry and a red pepper in the fridge. So I sliced those up into similar sized pieces, threw those into the oil, and just gave them a nice stir fry until they were nice and brown. I want to take a quick minute to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Mizan, a kitchen tool company offering premium kitchen tools at a very affordable price because they're cutting out the middleman. And my new favorite Mizan product is definitely their carbon steel pan. I've been obsessed with this pan. It's pretty much taken over as my pan of choice in the kitchen because it's just so versatile. Because of the material, it's naturally nonstick with a very easy seasoning process. And I really like that natural patina that develops on the carbon steel from just using it over time. What's great about it is that it has similar properties as cast iron, but it's not nearly as heavy. It's about 42% lighter than cast iron, so it's really easy to maneuver, but you can still develop a lot of heat and retain heat in this pan. So you can get a beautiful crust or a beautiful sear on whatever you're cooking. So if you're interested in this carbon steel pan or any of the other awesome Misen products, I have a ton of them in this kitchen. Make sure you click the link below in the description and use code word PROHOMECOOKS for 20% off your first order. Now back to some teriyaki. And finally, the last element to really bring this dish together is some fluffy white rice. And another great reason to master this dish is to get better at making rice at home, which for me even is a constant battle of just tinkering and adjusting my methods. Believe it or not, rice can be very difficult to make at home, especially if you don't have a rice cooker and I'm using just a pot for this rice. So I'm gonna show you the method that I use and it starts off by washing 
washing your rice. So I've measured out one cup full of rice and keep that cup around because you'll need it to measure out your water. And I'm going to first wash this rice to get all of that excess starch off the exterior of your rice. And it's gonna take a few times until that liquid starts to run clear. Now, most rice packages will recommend a two parts water to one part rice ratio, but they're generally not telling you to wash your rice. And because we washed our rice, we now have added water into our rice. So because we have that initial water, I'm just gonna go with a one to one ratio. So I'm gonna start my rice on a high heat just until it comes up to a gentle simmer and you start seeing those bubbles. Right when you see those bubbles, you're gonna put a cap on your pot, turn your heat down to the lowest it goes, just a really gentle flame and set your timer for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, your water should be completely absorbed in your rice. But what I like to do is let that rice steam in there. So keep that lid on and just let it steam until you're ready to serve your dish. And that extra heat is going to bring that rice up to the place it needs to be, that perfect tenderness. So as far as plating this dish goes, you've got options. You can cook the sauce into the chicken. You could add some sauce to the veggies and stir fry them up in the pan. Or of course you could just drizzle the sauce over. I'm gonna try something new today that just kind of popped into my head. I'm gonna take the crispy chicken and just dunk it. Why dunk not? Dunk Just give it a dunk. Now that chicken is fully glazed, so I can just slice that up and serve it with the rice and veggies. So the last reason you should definitely master this dish is that teriyaki is a crowd pleaser for everyone. I don't think I've met anyone who has not liked this dish. When I was a kid and I went to a Japanese restaurant, before I was eating sushi, I was scared of sushi at the time, I was ordering chicken teriyaki because you've got the sweetness, you've got the saltiness, pretty undeniable as a kid, yet as an adult, it still holds up. It's still incredible, especially when you really nail down those traditional Additional ingredients for the sauce. It's just a crowd pleaser all around. So hopefully I inspired you in some way to make this dish. And if you do make it, make sure you tag me on Instagram at Life by Mike G so I can see your lovely creations. 